automated sub items and sequenced sub items inside of monday.com in this video i'm going to show you how to automatically create sub items based on triggers and then use the due date and completion date from the previous sub item to then set the date for the new sub item and it work in a sequence and you can do this for as many sub items as you want so the due date is always accurate for you and your team this is something my clients are always asking me about so i've decided to make a video hopefully show you guys how to do it as well uh, by the way if you need any help with monday.com or automating or integrating your business we'd be delighted to help check out the link below so as you can see i'm inside of my monday.com system this is just an example system, as you can see here. Now, I'm firstly going to just walk you through my sub item setup, okay? Just to give you a little bit of context on how I would do things. So you can see it's quite simple. I've got obviously the sub item name, nothing I can do about that. I've then not got the owner of the sub item, so who's responsible for completing it. Um, and by the way, traditionally, I only really use sub items for tasks. There are some edge cases. Um, I'm finding more and more, and Monday's giving more flexibility with sub items um but for the most part only tasks i've then got the status so to do or done i've then got the due date so when is the uh when is the task due i've also got the due date set as deadline so just go to settings and then set it as a deadline if you're not familiar with that and then i've got effort so typically i work in 0.51 so half a day being 0.51 being a full day and then 1.52 etc etc this allows me to manage resource allocation and resource management, so people's workload. So if I say a task is going to be one, it's then going to show on their workload management as being one, and then we've got effort capacity and stuff like that. If you're not familiar with uh, workload management, check out the link below. I've then got date created, which is uh, a date column that's locked, and then when a, I've got an automation that runs that says when an item is created, set date created to today. I've then got a date completed, date column as well, locked. I've got a, a status that runs when status changes to done, set date completed to today. And I've also got a sequence number thing I'll come on to very, very shortly, and it will all make sense, and you'll be, <laughs> you'll be intrigued as to what this is for the time being. So first and foremost, I want to automatically just create sub items based on something happening inside of the system. So typically when we work with clients, they have an enormous list of sub items that need to be done for a particular part of their process, their sales process or their fulfillment process or their onboarding process. This is where I would begin to use sub items. So let's say we go to automate in the top right hand corner. We need to go to board automations. I actually prefer this view. Uh, so it's just a bit easier for me um, less going on and then go to add automation in the top left hand corner and then we just need to create our trigger so in this instance just as an example for this video i'm going to say when status changes to so when status changes to pause projects now some people might do um, a great example is when item is created and then they'd add a filter and only if status is equal to something uh, let's say you're doing a particular product so, or, or service so all of your services go onto one board and then depending on the service that you're actually offering or the product then the the sub items that are created might be slightly different so you've got options there but like i said when status changes to uh, pause projects then what all i'm going to do is create an action and it's create sub item very very easy so create sub item i can give my sub item a name so example sub item i can automatically assign it an owner um, so every time this sub item is created it's automatically assigned to me um, select the status as either to do or done now due date unfortunately there's nothing you can do about it at this stage but i will come on to how and then we can define an effort so if i know that this task is going to take one and a half days i'd set that there i then got date created and date completed they'll automatically populate and then sequence number i will come on to very very soon so i hit create automation and that's it that's pretty much it job done um video over <laughs> i'm joking uh, so i changed the status to pause projects and what's going to happen automation is going to run bottom right hand corner and you can see here that that all automation that automations run successfully create an example sub item with the due date etc etc now you probably notice that the due date is not populated and it's absolutely crucial. It's one of the most important parts. Now, we can, there is a way of getting around getting around this or there is a really bad way that monday.com is kind of allow like basic automations to do which is we can just set the date within the sub item now that's all well and good but if i set it as the 24th of the 9th 2024 which is today obviously 
um, or I said it on the 27th of the 9th, 2024, that's going to run as 27th of the 9th, 2024 in 20 years to come. So if I'm in 2026 and this sub items like runs, <laughs> guess what happens? The due date is for 27th September, 2024. Nothing we can do about that. So you can populate information there. It's just not particularly helpful. However, there is a way around this, like I mentioned, and this is where sequence numbers come in. So what we're going to do is we are going to create an automation that allocates a sequence number to a sub item um, and then we can run through these series of sub items or sequences. Um, so sequences are better placed when there are maybe fewer sub items. So let's say 10 tasks that need to be done for onboarding, for example. But the second task can only start when the first one is actually being completed and the third one can only start when the second one's being completed. So there's actually a sequence. There's an order to what needs to happen uh, and there's a reason why because you can't you can't do this before you can do this, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. That's where sequencing comes in. So I'm just going to delete this double A thing here. Um, so this is sequence number one. This is sub item number one and when the status changes to one. Okay. So we've got when the status changes to pause projects, then create sub item in our automations. Now I'm going to click in, I'm going to set the sequence number to one here. Okay. And then I'm just going to press update automation. Then I'm going to go ahead and press add automation in the top left hand corner. And I'm going to say when sub items, this is actually a trigger when sub item is created. And then I'm going to add a filter to find my sequencing and then go when sub item is created and only if, the uh, the number meets condition and the number is the sequence number and then we just go to equal to and then let's just say one as an example then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set date so now because we're working within sub items for both we can actually run automations for sub items it's a bit weird but hey monday.com is a bit weird um, then set date and we're going to define the due dates so this is a sub item due date as today and then we're going to push this date to so push date uh, let's go here push date due date by and then we select the due date column so same column as above and then some days weeks or months or business days so I'm gonna say by five business days business days yes and then I'm gonna hit create automation okay so now when a sub item is created yada 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 number is equal to one so sequence number is one sub item due date is set to today so watch and learn I'm gonna delete this example sub item go ahead and delete it now I'm going to change my status from in progress to pause projects and I'm going to wait for my sub item to populate. There you go. It's automatically populated. And then the due date, hopefully, if I haven't, well, I haven't messed it up, then you see it automatically populated and then set five business days after. Now that's all well and good, but now we want to begin to create our sequencing. So what happens when sequence number one is completed? Cool. So it's very easy when and then we just same principle again. We just create that trigger and action process. So when um, status changes to something, so we're going to create our status when status being the sub item status changes to done, then create sub item. OK, create sub item. There we go. Um, example sub item number two. Uh, again, define the owner if we want to. Um, I can't do anything about the due date at this stage, status, whatever, effort. Let's say this is going to take five days to complete as an example. And then we make sure that we set the sequence as number two in the process. OK, that's it. Create automation. OK, and then all we're going to do is add another automation. And then we're going to go when um, sub item is created. And then we're going to add our filter and only if number number being sequence number uh, equal to and then in this instance it's going to be sequence number number two then set date to um, and we can set the due date to today and then push date by x number of days so push due date due date by let's say 10 working days this time business days whatever you want to call it create automation fantastic there we go now you could just use if you wanted to when uh you could just use when sub item created sequence number blah 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 it or contains data or something like that then just push it five business days every time but if you do have variables in the amount of time that it's expected to take between sub item to sub item as due dates then you're going to need to have like a, a unique automation for this um 
So you can see if I change the status to done now, what is going to miraculously happen is it's going to set date completed today. As you can see here, sub item is going to create sequence number number two, 24th of September, push to the 8th of October as the business day. There we go. Now that is magic. That's literally everything, to be honest with you. You can use one automation, like I said, for all of the sub items, if the due date is always going to be like X number of days afterwards. So if it's always five business days after the previous one was completed, then you can do that. Um, but if you, like I said, if you've got variance between how long one task is going to take to the other or the amount of days in between, then you're going to have to create unique automations. So Finally, I'm just going to run you through it one more time. By the way, if you need any help automating, integrating, streamlining your business with monday.com and any other business applications, check out the link below. We'd be delighted to help. Um, go to automate in the top right hand corner. Again, I can run you through this again if you want, but I suspect everyone has dropped off. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll do it. So when status, <laughs> when status changes, uh, status changes to done. So sub item status changes to done. Um, and only if. Uh, so we need a number, number meets condition, sub item number, sequence number is equal to two in this case. There we go. Then create sub item. So now we're creating sequence number number three. So example, sub item number three. And then I'll set the owner as myself again. I've got a lot of tasks on my hand. Due date, nothing we can do. Let's say effort for this one is 0.5 and then this is obviously sequence number number three there we go that's it and then all we need to do is say uh when sub item stages stage, this change is done and if yeah and then we need to just push there so then we go add automation when sub item oh don't know what's going on there when sub item is created and only if number matches or meets condition number being sequence number equal to and then three on this occasion. So again, we're just literally going up, repeating the same thing over and over again. Set date. So set sub item date, due date being set as today. And then we need to just push that sub item date. So push, push, there we go. Push date, due date by, let's say in this case, it's only going to take one day. So I'm only given a one day window for this thing to happen. Create automation. So now all I need to do, is just hit done on sub item number two. All I'm gonna do, go hit done, bang, there we go, and that's it. So this will create number three in the process. And voila, so très bien. Um, so there you go, 24th due date, and then plus one well, one working day, 0.5 effort, and so on and so forth. And you can see our sequencing is begin, beginning to populate. Now I did notice, um, to full transparency, I did make a mistake on one of the automations. I forgot to add a filter. When sub item status changes to done, I forgot to add a filter that says and only if sub item sequence is equal to one and then obviously two and then three. So just be mindful of that. Hopefully this video makes sense. Um, hopefully it's going to be very, very useful for you and your team and your business. Like I said, if you do need any help setting up automations, integrations with other business applications or any help with monday.com, please check out the link below. We would be delighted to help. Thank you ever so much for your time and I will hopefully see you soon. Goodbye.